And here we go. For... I think we might have launched the entire sling that time. Hello everyone and welcome back to Astrophysicist Plays Tears of the Kingdom. I am today here to complete the trebuchet challenge, taking into account all we've learned in the past two episodes, some things I found out myself in the intervening time, and some things uh, sent in by one of my lovely viewers. You might know him, his name is Andrew Eisen, he runs his own channel, I'll link it up in the top, as, as well as in a pinned comment. So you can check out his channel and his Let's Play of Tears of the Kingdom, and once we get into it, I'll show you what he's found out. Oh, hey, look, a uh, crop circle. Wrong button again. Looks kind of like our buddy, our, our ghost buddy. All right, I guess we're going to cowabunga it. Cowabunga. Gonna... Yeah. I think this is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> and so ends the hero's journey. Because <laughs> he missed the lake. <laughs> Just gonna get this is crumpled against the cr Oh, that's wonderful. First, I'm here to show you one of the things I found. So, I've been searching around the world for things that could be used as a better counterweight, and there are heavier things I've found, and I think the heaviest object that we can get is here in Utom Shrine. Uh, this probably exists in some other shrines, but this is the only one I'm aware of at the moment. Unfortunately, there's only one of it. So we're going to have to be a bit tricky if we want to get a pair of them. So I'll show you the trick I figured out. Um, you know, before I showed you how with auto build, which I can't show you inside the shrine, you can slap a pair of objects together and then pull them out. Now we're going to want multiple of these uh, counterweights, so having a pair of them will be useful, but there's only one to work with, and we have to attach it to something to use with auto build, which makes it difficult to get just a pair. So I have figured out how to do it, it's just a bit involved. So let's go through. So step one, which I can't show you here, is go to this shrine and clear it normally. It's a Proving Grounds type shrine, which means you won't have any of your items uh, with you, but just go through it and figure it out. And once you're done, you can come back in and collect items as normal. Now, this that part is important here as we're gonna need to have our regular items and be able to take them back out in order to get these counterweights. So. Once you're back in, come over, ascend here, hop across, and we'll run around here. Not going to worry about alerting enemies as we won't be in here long enough for this to matter. So if you run around here, still on the top level, there is this giant cube here. The item name is Iron Box, but there are also smaller iron boxes, so I'm just going to call this the giant iron box. So, what you'll need for this is two weapons you can fuse things to. So, with weapon one, go in, fuse something to it, and you're done. Exit the shrine. Then we're just going to do the exact same thing with the other weapon. So, I'll be right back once I've done that. Eh, that's the second block fused. Okay, now that we've done this, we're gonna hop out of the shrine again, 
and we are going to break apart both of these weapons, not through the menu, but through a helpful NPC. Um, if you don't want to know where this NPC is, uh, skip ahead about five or ten minutes in the video. But for everyone else, okay, people skip ahead now. Okay, so for everyone else who doesn't mind knowing where it is or already knows, this NPC is over in Terrytown. So we're going to head over there now. And here we are in Terrytown at Pellison's Break It Down Shop. Hello, Pellison. So, you can probably guess how this is going to go. We're going to disassemble both of these weapons. It's going to cost us 40 rupees to do. Yep, yep. And break it all down. And then... Yep, you can guess how this goes from here. We break them both down. We move the block off and then we put both of the blocks together so that we have a pair of blocks that we can recreate with auto built. So let me get that done right now. And here we are. We'll fuse these together. And then in auto build, we have a nice pair of blocks we can use. I already have one from before here that I've favorited. I've also favorited a pair of logs to work with. And I will now show you where to get the next useful material. So way back right near where we started on the Sky Island on Yukuo Shrine, we can find some hooks. These hooks are going to be the key component to building our sling. As wheels aren't strong enough to hold things together with all the force we're putting in and tend to wobble about a lot and it's also hard to get things centered which we want for a sling but a pair of hooks seems to work quite well so here at yukuo shrine if we turn left and look down we can find a supply of hooks to work with so Hooks were one of the ideas that Andrew brought up. He also brought up two other ideas I'll be taking advantage of, both of which come in Zonai capsules. One is stakes that we can use to hold things in place. Um, and the other is portable pots, which you can use for a cup for launching things. Um, and we don't need to rely on using auto build to take one out of a shrine, which will be zonite and then disappear when it's alone. This makes it a lot easier to work with. The hooks we do have to copy. So we're going to make a setup with the hooks that will be the most useful to us going ahead. So in our design, we're going to be using two hooks. So we're going to set up... Uh, well, we can set up each of them, or we can set up just one. It depends on how many save slots you have free in auto build. I'm going to show it to you with just one here and burn through a bit of zonite. So, take one hook, set it up like this, and pop out a portable pot. Now, we don't have to set one up here, made up made out of which will later be made out of zonite when we go to the final design uh you can do this other ways but somehow you've got to copy the hook and in the final design it will be attached to a pot so i think this is the best way to do it okay so that's one of the hooks you can go in and save that which i believe i already have actually that one's slightly different so this part is important. You want the hook to be perpendicular to the direction of the pot. If it's a different way, the final design won't uh, quite work as well. Okay, so that's one of the hooks. The other hook will be attaching to some of the logs. So for this design, I decided to go with the um, kind of long rock. Uh, logs, not the longest ones we found, because the longest ones actually get a bit thicker at the end, and this adds a bit extra weight, and any extra weight on the arm makes things much more difficult uh, to uh, send things flying. So I decided to go with this, since they can allow us to create an overall lighter design, and 
we might need to use a few more of them, but on the other hand, we've now got a much heavier counterweight to work with. So we won't need as many objects in the counterweight section, which will hopefully balance out it out and allow us to use a lighter arm. So here, this is, you know, basically the logs are circularly symmetric, so you can connect it up however you want, as long as the hook is on one end. And then we'll save that in our auto build history. Okay. So time to go off to our building area which has the rest of the things we need. I'll see you there, off to the Dueling Peak stable as usual. And here we are at the stable. We're only going to need one crate this time, since we're going to be um, using a slightly different mechanism of holding the trebuchet in place. So let me show you what we're going to do. So first, I'll show you how to set up the um, sling portion, which is also how we're going to be holding the trebuchet steady in the end. So take out one stake from a capsule and we are going to attach it. Basically, there are a lot of ways you can attach it that'll work, but I'm just going to attach it straight to the side of one of these uh, crates. This allows us, once we move it around with the Ultra Hand, to put it right into the ground and it'll stick there. And we'll only move if we use Ultra Hand. This will allow us to hold down the arm of the trebuchet and prevent it from launching until we're ready. So for the rest of the sling, we can go to Auto Build and take out the hook attached to a portable pot and build it here. So it'll be a bit easier to connect this up once we have everything together, but I'll show you this part now and then we'll get to constructing the rest of the trebuchet. So you want to get this as low as possible to the ground and then attach the pot to the crate and then you'll have a structure here where if you break the crate which you can easily do with fire or an axe the pot and hook will be let loose and that will loose the rest of the trebuchet to go flying up, up. okay so now let's get to building the main body of the trebuchet as before we're going to cut down a couple of trees so we have some logs to work with. It's always easy to easier to work with real materials than Zonite replicas as you can much more easily adjust for any mistakes you make along the way without destroying the pieces. So I'll chop down a couple of trees here and then the body is almost entirely like before just we're using a different material for the arm which is a bit thinner and a much heavier counterweight. So let's start putting that together. Now, in case you're coming along and you haven't watched the previous video, I'll be going through all of the steps of this here. So step one is to attach those logs as legs to the pair of thin logs. Now, if you're watching this the first time, you can easily uh, collect these logs by chopping down trees in the Tabantha Tundra as well as many other regions just from near the snowfield stable. There's a bunch around. You can also get some logs that are even longer but get a bit thicker towards the end. And you might find that's overall beneficial. And let's just find these a place where they'll stay put. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay, then we will take these logs and set them up at a 90 degree angle to each other. And for these logs, we want to connect directly to the middle of the thin log. Okay, and now for the other log which will form the leg. We want to connect to 
yeah, we want to connect directly to the center log here so that we have the weight best distributed through it and it doesn't go through one log into the other. Now go to your capsules and take out six sleds. These, if you didn't watch last time, basically form the wheel we'll be working with. Now they don't look much like a wheel now and they'll only look a bit more like a wheel later, but they do get the job done. So, here's how they work. So, take one of these, and you don't want to put it on directly flat to the logs. It actually has to be at a 45 degree angle to the log. So, put it on connecting to the center of the connecting the center of the sledge to the corner of the log like that. And then we'll do the same with the other log with the sled being parallel to this one. So if you look at those two sleds, you can see they're parallel now. And if we set this up, it should be able to stand flat. Now it does tip over because there's more weight on one side here, but this does stand pretty flat. So next we are going to set up the rest of the wheel portions from these sleds. So relative to that first sled, we're going to tilt at a uh, 45 degree angle and attach the next sled to the edge of that. Do the same on both sides. And then for the final one, it'll be a, a 45 degree angle to the second or 90 degree angle to the first. Attach to the edge. And repeat for the other side. So, you can see here how we have basically a quarter of a wheel to work with that we can allow this to rotate through. So, let's set up our counterweight now and we can show that rotation actually in progress. So, we'll make auto-built copies of these giant iron blocks. Now, one thing we have to be careful with here is these blocks are so large that they could stick out past the edge of the wheel portion if we allowed them to. So we want to attach them just before they would get to that. So, and we also want to make sure we attach them to the center log and not to either of the sleds. And exactly not like that. Okay, I've got it. I had to disassemble the sleds, put the counterweight on first, but that was able to get it. So you want to have the counterweight as centered as possible so that you don't get it tumbled off to the side. Uh, my sleds aren't perfectly aligned, but that isn't really uh, such a big deal. So you can see if I set this up, that this will tumble over very quickly because of how heavy these blocks are. And I'm in fact going to make it tumble over even more quickly by adding another pair of blocks to it to give us just the best counterweight we can get away with. Now, you have a choice at this point which you'll understand why it works this way a bit more later. You can attach the second pair of blocks directly here, or you can offset them forward a bit. So if you offset them directly, when once the trebuchet starts rolling, it's going to come to a stop with the arm completely vertical. However, if you offset these forward, which from this perspective is actually down a bit, that is to say we would take this and connect it up a bit. Sorry, a tree's getting in the way. 
then the trebuchet will come to a rest a little bit before it's vertical. This is actually what I'm going to do. So you can see it comes to an angle just shy of vertical. This means that the launching angle of the projectile will be angled upwards a bit, which will hopefully give it a bit more distance. It won't get quite as high, but it's barely a bit below. So we were trading a bit of energy for a bit of a better angle, which will hopefully give us better distance overall. Okay, so final bit is to set up the rest of the arm. Um, we're also going to have to fix this sling here since the crate broke while I was working. And get ready to launch it. So, for the rest of the arm, we have an auto-built slot set up for a pair of logs and a hook, which we're going to create here. So I'm going to try this first of all with an extremely long arm, see how well that works. And if we have problems with it, we can go back to a shorter arm, which I was able to get working successfully before. So this part, things are getting so large here, it's a bit tough to wrangle everything together. What we're going to want to do for this bit is have the hook facing upwards as we connect it to the end of that log. So, yeah, that one's just a bit too high for us to grab, but should still be manageable. If we let it go, quickly switch to recall so it comes back down, and then grab it once we've recalled it. Okay. So, now, this doesn't normally get low enough, but if we put it at an angle, I think we should be able to scoop it up, and it'll adjust to be flat. So, let's... You have to pull down on the right stick to kind of even it out, and yes, there we go. And, oh, you can see kind of a proto-launch there with just the hook. Let me reset it so that we can see it again, and ooh, some of the sleds have broken off. So I'm gonna reattach these. Maybe the fact that they were offset a bit uh, made, made them not hold together as well. So let me put them on again, and hopefully they'll stick together this time. Uh, this part is a bit hit or mess. In my original testing design, I didn't have problems with the sleds breaking apart. Uh, so you might have to play around a bit with the best way to attach the sled. And there might also be other things coming in, like you can see from these two logs, they aren't, you know, quite aligned perfectly. So there's a lot of uh, little fiddly bits you can try playing around with to get a design that seems to be the most stable. So let's try it again like this, and we'll do another test. Ideally, we don't want the sleds to break apart every time. If they do, it's not the end of the world, but let's see how it goes. Okay, good. We have a successful test roll. And nothing broke apart. Perfect. All right, so now we are going to set up the sling portion once more, which means we're going to need another crate. Now, I could just uh, get it out of auto build, but we're close enough here, I'm going to get a real crate. Okay. So, as before, we attach the crate to the stake. Then we attach the portable pot as low as possible to the crate. Then we will set this up roughly where uh, we want the, well, exactly where we want the cup to be pre-launch. So there's an annoying whiz robe over in that direction. I'm gonna aim it over there just on the off chance things aim up well enough that I can hit them. I actually did in one of my tests, but unfortunately wasn't recording, so you'll just have to trust me that I did once nail that wizard robe with a time bomb. 
at least the explosion of a bomb, if not the bomb itself. Okay. So, putting this together. Now, it's going to be easiest if we can hold it from the hook. So, what I'm going to do is going to set it up like this, let it roll, and then use recall to bring it back down where we can grab the hook. Oh, too slow. Okay, I grabbed the log next to the hook. That's good enough. Okay. So, let's find our sling. And we will put this together. So, attach the hooks together. Actually, don't attach the hooks together. We want them to be held together loosely like this so that there's room for rotation once it goes up. So, put it together like that. You'll hear a little bit of straining, but it does hold together. So, you can see here, this lower hook will effectively act as a sling, able to rotate around. So, basically the plan is that once it starts rising, this is going to be able to rotate somewhat freely around a path circle or so like that. This will allow it to get a bit of extra rotational speed. And in the real world, a sling is also used to adjust the trajectory that the projectile is launched from a trebuchet. Now, we can't really adjust it that way here. This is just to fill out everything that we normally have in a trebuchet, but we do benefit if it gets a bit of extra rotational speed. So, everything is now in place. So, let's set up our projectile. Now, again, we do not attach the projectile. So, keep in mind, the hooks aren't attached to each other, and the projectile isn't attached to the pot. It's jiggling a bit, but that should be fine. And then, whenever we want to launch, we can destroy the crate. I'm going to set it on fire, which will give us a bit more time to move out and get a good perspective on it. And here we go. For... I think we might have launched the entire sling that time. And broken off a leg, uh, some sleds as well. <laughs> uh, completely overshot the whiz rope. Alright, let's reset. Try again, see if just a little bit of tweaking can uh, get things a bit better. This is pretty sensitive to uh, the flatness of the ground it's on. Uh, so let's reset the sling. So to rebuild that, it should be right in our history as a single piece here. And before setting it up, let's try to find an overall flatter stretch of ground. Yeah, I come here as it has some useful materials, but there are definitely flatter places in Hyrule that can be used for testing. Okay. And once more, we'll use recall to get this down. Yeah, okay, got it this time. And, yep, stable. Grab another time bomb. Okay. 
sometimes the physics gets a little bit wonky. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to be cooking yet, and uh, you're definitely not supposed to be cooking a bomb. Okay, let's see how this goes. Hopefully the bomb won't just jump out of the pot on us. Uh, we completely lost sight of that. That's such good distance, we can't even see it going. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to conclude it here for the trebuchet challenge. If anybody has any further improvements, uh, please do let me know. I'd be interesting to, interested to see what you come up with and see if you can get even better designs. All right. Thank you, everyone, again. And I will see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and click the bell to be sure you get notifications of new uploads. See you again soon.